Hi folks, my name is Stephen Bill and I'm the Communications Coordinator here at the Thunder Bay District Health Unit. I'm here today on behalf of the Health Unit to answer some common and important questions related to COVID-19 vaccines. Now before I begin, a quick note. I'm covering a lot of ground in this video and you may not need or really even want to watch it all. So to make it easier on you, we are, we're providing timestamps of the questions that we address in the description of the video itself. That way, you can just skip straight away to the questions that matter, most to you. It's okay, I won't be offended. Health Canada's approval of the Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine on December 9, 2020 marked a critical moment in Canada's fight against COVID-19. Vaccines are an important tool to help with the long-term management of COVID-19 and we here at the Health Unit are excited to be a part of this rollout. We recognize that you may have questions and so in partnership with the Thunder Bay Regional Health and Science Centre, we're committed to providing answers to some frequently asked questions so that you can make an informed decision about taking this vaccine. So our first question asks, why get vaccinated? Well, while many people with COVID-19 have only a mild illness, others may get a severe illness that could even result in death. The reality is there is no way to know how COVID-19 will affect you, even if you are not in an, at an increased risk of severe complications. COVID-19 vaccination will help protect you by creating an immune response without having to experience the illness of COVID-19. How do mRNA vaccines like the COVID-19 vaccine work? The first vaccine to be approved in Canada gains COVID-19 is from Pfizer BioNTech, and it's called an mRNA vaccine. There's also another mRNA COVID vaccine created by a company called Moderna. Now these vaccines use messenger RNA or mRNA that provides instructions to the cells in our bodies to make a protein from the coronavirus called a spike protein when injected. Once the mRNA has provided the instructions that allow the cell to make the spike protein, the immune system is activated because it recognizes the spike protein as being different from the body's own proteins. This is called an immune response. Now the mRNA from the vaccine is then degraded by our cells and the spike proteins are destroyed by the immune system. Although mRNA vaccines are new for use, they are actually well known in the scientific community as research has, researchers have been uh, studying and working with them for decades now. Can the mRNA vaccine alter a person's DNA? No. mRNA is not able to alter or modify a person's genetic makeup or their DNA. The mRNA from a COVID-19 vaccine never even enters the nucleus of the cell, which is where our DNA is kept. This means the mRNA does not affect or even interact with our DNA in any way. Instead, COVID-19 vaccines that use mRNA work with the body's natural defenses to safely develop protection or immunity to the disease. Can the COVID-19 vaccine cause a COVID-19 infection? Again, the answer is no. None of the COVID-19 vaccines currently in development use the live virus that causes COVID-19. So getting the infection from the vaccine is actually impossible. The goal for all vaccines is to teach the immune system to recognize and fight the virus that causes COVID-19. This process can cause symptoms similar to COVID-19 infections, such as fever, because these come from our body's natural immune response to the vaccine. Once a person is fully vaccinated, can they stop following public health measures like wearing a mask, physical distancing, and self-isolating when they become sick? The answer is unfortunately no, not yet. While experts learn more about the protection that COVID-19 vaccines provide under real life conditions, it will be important for everyone to continue using all the tools available to us to help stop this pandemic, like covering your mouth and nose with a mask, uh, staying at least two meters away from others outside your household, and self-isolating when you're sick. Healthcare and other staff must still wear personal protective equipment even after they've been vaccinated and participate in all routine surveillance testing at their workplace. COVID-19 vaccination plus these public health measures will offer the best protection from getting and spreading the COVID-19 virus. Experts need to understand more about the protection that the COVID-19 vaccines provide before deciding to change the recommendations on steps that everyone should take to slow the spread of the virus. Other factors, including how many people get vaccinated and how the virus is spreading in communities, will also no doubt affect this decision. 
Okay, can COVID-19 vaccines cause a false positive COVID-19 viral test? The short answer is no. COVID-19 vaccines will not cause a positive test on COVID-19 viral tests like PCR, which are used to see if a person has a current infection. If a person's body develops an immune response, which is the goal of vaccination, they may test positive on some antibody tests. Antibody tests indicate that a person had a previous infection and may have some level of protection against the virus. Antibody tests are not being used for diagnosis of COVID-19 in Ontario, except for very rare special clinical circumstances where it is unclear if a person had the infection in the past. And antibody tests are not used in assessment or testing centers or long-term care homes throughout the province. Okay, how many doses are required for the vaccine to be effective? Quick answer, two doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine are required for full protection and those doses are given 21 days apart. What are the side effects of the COVID-19 vaccine? The most common side effects are pain where the immunization was given, uh, there's fatigue or extreme tiredness and a headache. Some people in the vaccine trials uh, had also reported muscle pains, chills, joint pains, and fevers. Now these symptoms were usually mild or moderate and they went away within a few days after immunizations. These are all very uh, common and expected reactions because of the way the body's natural immune system responds and are very similar to those reported following a flu shot. If a person develops an unusual side effect to a vaccine, what should they do? Well, if at work, when they notice these side effects, they should report it to their manager or their occupational health probably as soon as possible. If the reaction is severe, they should seek medical attention right away. If the reaction is mild, however, or however different from the side effects listed above, they should call us here at the Thunder Bay District Health Unit to report their reaction to an immunization nurse. In rare cases, serious allergic reactions can happen. Allergic reactions can be treated and are usually temporary, but it is important to seek medical attention if there's trouble breathing, if hives or swelling of the face and throat happens after the immunization. Healthcare reporter or healthcare providers will report the side effects directly to the Thunder Bay District Health Unit and any reported side effects will be tracked to monitor vaccine safety. Can people with severe allergies to a component of the COVID-19 vaccine still receive the vaccine? The answer is no. People with a history of severe allergic reactions to a component of the COVID-19 vaccine or its container should not receive the vaccine. A complete list of these ingredients in the vaccine is available on the Health Canada's website. Most of the ingredients are not known to ever be associated with severe immediate allergic reactions. There is one ingredient called polyethylene glycol or PEG that is able to cause a severe allergic reaction in individuals who are allergic to it. But this is also found in products uh, for bowel preparations, for colonoscopies, laxatives, uh, cough syrups, cosmetics, skincare products, and even some food and drinks. Can people with severe allergies to other vaccines, medicines, or foods receive the COVID-19 vaccine? Yes. Currently, only individuals with a history of severe allergic reaction to a component of the vaccine or the vaccine container are advised not to get the COVID-19 vaccine because of the risk of severe allergies. But this is a very small number of people. Who should not be vaccinated at the current time because of lack of information from clinical trials? Okay, currently, people under 16, those who are pregnant or breastfeeding, and those who are immunosuppressed because of a current medical condition or treatment, or those with an autoimmune disorder should not receive the COVID-19 vaccine until more evidence is available. There are, however, some people in these groups who may be able to receive the vaccine if their healthcare provider determines that the benefits of the vaccine outweigh the risk for the individual and the person consents, understanding that there is still a lack of evidence on the effects of the vaccine for that particular group. Are there any other precautions with receiving the vaccine? Okay, people who have a fever or are sick with COVID-19 symptoms should wait until they are feeling better to receive the vaccine. Women are advised to avoid trying to get pregnant for at least two months after getting both doses of the vaccine. People with a bleeding disorder or who are on blood thinner medication should consult their healthcare provider before getting vaccinated. Can people who have been diagnosed with COVID-19 be vaccinated? Now, because of the serious health risks associated with COVID-19, 
and the fact that becoming infected again with COVID-19 is actually possible, people can still get a COVID-19 vaccine even if they have been sick with the virus before. At this time, experts don't really know how long someone is protected from getting sick again after recovering from COVID-19. The immunity someone gains from having an infection, called natural immunity, varies from person to person. And so we won't know how long immunity produced by vaccina vaccination lasts until we have more data on this. How was Health Canada able to approve the COVID-19 vaccine so quickly? Did they lower their safety standards for vaccines? This is definitely a common question. Now, the reason the COVID-19 vaccine was approved quickly is not because safety standards were changed or compromised in any way. It's because Health Canada shortened the administrative and organizational process of vaccine authorization, including advances in science and technology, including mRNA technology that contributed to the development of the vaccine, international collaboration between scientists, uh, health professionals, researchers, industry, and governments, there was an increased dedicated funding for this vaccine, that definitely helped, and a quick recruitment of participants for clinical trials and rapid setup of clinical trials to demonstrate safety and the effectiveness of the vaccine. And finally, there was a careful review of all scientific data and evidence as it was being produced, rather than waiting until the end of the clinical trials to begin reviewing the findings. Now that the vaccine is approved and it begins to be used, vaccine safety and effectiveness will continue to be monitored on an ongoing basis. This includes requiring all healthcare providers to report all adverse events after immunization to their public health unit so they can be tracked and reviewed. That was a lot of questions. Well, thanks very much for taking the time to listen to all this information about the COVID-19 vaccine. And if you've been offered the vaccine and you've got any further questions, you can definitely check out our website, tbdhu.com slash COVID vaccines, or just call us directly here at the health unit, 807-65-5900. We'd be happy to answer those questions. In the meantime, please keep washing your hands, keep wearing a mask, and please keep your distance and staying home if you're feeling ill. Stay safe out there, folks. Bye for now.